Hi, welcome to Vintage Computer Festival 2020 and the session for my project RetroShield for Arduino Mega. As you can see, RetroShields are small dark cards plugged into Arduino Megas. A real processor executes your code while Arduino emulates the rest of the system, such as the ROM, the RAM, UART, and storage. If you like to modify the design or even run a different platform, it's as simple as downloading new Arduino code. You, know, you could also use existing Arduino shields to add new capabilities. You don't have to mess with wiring complicated circuits. My goal is to build a daughter card for every vintage processor out there, starting from the earliest to the latest. And in the past one and a half years, I built cards for seven of them. 6502, 6809, Z80, 8031, 8085, 1802, and Signetics 2650. You can visit the project website by going to www.8bitforce.com. From there, click on the project's link at the top and select RetroShield. There's also a link to the GitLab repository for software and hardware details. Now let me show you how it works and give you a demo. Arduino continuously toggles the clock and monitors the read, write, and address lines to figure out what the processor is trying to do. Depending on the read or write, Arduino will either drive the data bus or latch data from it. We can also assert the interrupt signals as needed. We use Arduino's internal flash and RAM to emulate the memories. Of course, all coding is done in a simple Arduino IDE. Arduino is cheap and simple, but it has two limitations. First, RAM is limited to 8 kilobytes only. Second, speed. For simple bus transactions like 6502 and 6809, we can get up to 200 kilohertz. However, for processors that take more than one cycle per instruction or have complicated bus transactions, speed is only acceptable to learn the instruction set. To overcome this, I designed RetroShield to TNZ adapter board in the Arduino Mega form factor. Using a TNZ 3.5, we get up to 256 kilobytes of RAM. Speed is also greatly improved because TNZ runs at 120 megahertz versus 16 on Arduino. As a result, we can clock the processors at their target speeds. The really nice thing with TNZ is we also use the existing Arduino IDE to write our code. This is the code for Apple One using 6502. Let's look at the CPU tick function, which is where the action is. So we set the clock high, we read the address lines, and then we check the state of the read write signal and perform a read or write. I will let you download the code and study the details. Let's run this and see what happens. I use a Terra term for terminal program. So let's get Arduino connected. And you can see Arduino code printed some configuration details, some notes about how to use it. We're gonna run the Apple basic. To do that, we type E000 run, and we get the basic prompt. We do 10 4 i equals 0 to 100, 20, print i, 30, next i, 40, end, list, and run. This is all being run by the actual processor, and everything else is emulated by Arduino. How cool is that? This is the code for emulating Commodore 64 BASIC using the same setup. See, I haven't done any like wiring anything. I'm just going to download this new code and play with Commodore 64. Are you ready? So Commodore 64, we only get 4K because, you know, this is Arduino. Uh, we can do print. And we say run. There you go. If you remember on Commodore 64, you could go up with the cursor and change the code. And when you enter, it updates to line 10. So if I hit enter again, it's going to run the code that I just changed and watch for hello. There you go. And this was done uh, with Michael Stell together. Uh, he is a guru on Commodore 64 ROM. We had to do a lot of hacks. But see, I did nothing. I just changed new code and I can run Commodore 64. I can run Kim 1. I can run Apple 1. And same thing for other microprocessors. There's one more thing I want to show you. It's a surprise guest for the next processor I'm working on. 
Earlier I mentioned I was going to do a daughter card for all the processors starting from the very first till the end. And here it is. I'm working on the RetroShield for Intel 4004. I'm still working on the code and I expect the hardware to be finalized at the end of the summer, but I have it working on a, like a very, very simple manner. So let's see, let's run it and see what happens. We're running a simple code, adding two four bit numbers together. And at the end, we halt by jumping back to address five. I have debug messages turned on, reset the processor, wait for the sync signal from the 4004. Once we latch onto it, we let it go through X number of uh, CPU cycles. And then we, re we release the reset. And you can see 4004 starts executing at address zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six. And since the last instruction is a jump back to five, you see the address gets stuck between five, six, five, six, five, six, five, six. So I, I'm, I'm super excited to have the very first processor running on Arduino. My goal is to build the daughter cards for 8008, um, 4040, and then do 8080. So we have the whole Intel series. I call this process breadboarding in software. I hope it makes sense why. My website has everything you need to build one, including schematics, layout files, and the Arduino code. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. I'm now going to go back to my microprocessor pets. See ya!